I made this video a while back, basically talking about what Manchester United could become in the 2024-25 season. I thought they would be in the title race, but after the first seven games of the Premier League season, I've realized that might not be possible. And the man's most fans think is responsible for their underperformance is Eric Ten Hag. With Ten Hag, I go into every game expecting a draw or a loss. That's not the United I chose to support. Celebrate the clean sheet? The attack was totally useless. Is Eric Ten Hag really going to stay? That's a question a lot of fans have been asking lately. And today, we're going to search for an answer. But before we begin, if you could drop a like on this video, it would really help me out. Let's try to hit a like goal of three likes. Thank you. Let's begin in the summer of 2022. Eric Ten Hag's first season as the Red Devils manager, and he was saying a lot of encouraging things. Yeah, it's um, the confidence is I have, have a good feeling to be consistent in our plan and when we have good people around with uh, the right connection of the right commitment uh, we will achieve the success we want to. So when fans were considering his past successes at other clubs the hopes got high and Ten Hag actually did deliver on his promises in his first season. With him as the head of the team they won the Carabao Cup they made it to the FA Cup finals. For United fans this was a new era of success and with placing third in the league and being able to play Champions League football for the first time in a year many thought this Dutch man was the manager that would finally bring home that dominant glory that Man United used to have in the past. For a while they were headed down that path. At the beginning of the 2023-24 season, they were winning a few games, but slowly they started to lose to teams they had beaten a few months prior. Crystal Palace 1-0, Brighton 3-1, Bournemouth 3-0. Things had gotten pretty bad in the Premier League for United, and pretty quickly. Halfway through the season, they started to hover around 7th, 8th place, and that was when the question about the future of Ten Hag started coming about. And in spite of the European performances finishing last in their Champions League group and getting knocked out of the Carabao Cup, the board decided to stick by Eric Ten Hag and trust the process. That proved to pay off when Man United finally took home the FA Cup near the end of the 2023-24 season, and even though Man United almost finished in the bottom half of the table that year, their hope was to be reinvested in Eric Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag must stay, period. I love this club, man. Keep Ten Hag, he's the guy who will take us to the top. I came here to win, and we have won two trophies, so also this year, I hope we want to win another trophy. And now that brings us to the present season. Before the year began, Man United had extended Eric Ten Hag's contract into 2025, signaling their confidence in him that he'll be able to perform and get United back to glory. Obviously, Man United are not doing that. Right now, at least, or else I wouldn't have a video. It's been their worst Premier League start since 1989, and so far this season, they've only been able to beat teams that sit in the bottom half of the table. They prove that they struggle against the Prem's top sides, losing to Liverpool 3-0, losing to Spurs 3-0, and taking another loss against Brighton early on in the season. Ever since his first season in charge, it has seemed that Ten Hag has gotten worse with every season, and this one is no different. This downturn in form has prompted many influencers and pundits to have their say on why Aaron Ten Hag should have or shouldn't have a future with Manchester United. Question before we go any further, and somebody can educate me. How on earth is he still in the job? I don't know. Like, how, how has he still got the job? Man? I do get the, the gist or the feeling that he, he'll survive this international break. I don't think he should. No. I think we've seen all the evidence we need to see. Uh, listen, I think it'll be, be tough for him, but listen, I, I have sympathy for him because I think he's been left out you know, to hang out to dry a little bit. Clearly, the mainstream opinion is that Ayrton Hogg should be gone, but that doesn't mean there isn't a fair share of fans who disagree on that statement. May we go God play with glory, glory, my giant. So to get to the correct answer on why he should or shouldn't be sacked and where Ten Hag's tactical weak points are, the first thing we should look at is Man United's weak defensive shape. They have conceded far too many goals this season and have been allowing their opponent to create high XG chances too easily in their final third. The root cause of these deficiencies in defense trail back to Ten Hag's tactics, allowing too much space for the opponent to start their attack. I'm not a football analyst, but it mostly comes down to there being too much space in between the lines specifically. So wherever the team goes to cover, there's always another space for the opponent to exploit. For example, with Casemiro in the midfield, he's covering too much space for one man, and it leaves the back line disconnected almost, and no wonder teams move right through the heart of Man United's midfield. But it all ties together when you take into account the worst of them all, the height of their back line. All too often, they've just been caught in behind by pacey wingers, which doesn't make much sense because why would they play so deep and be so afraid of balls in behind when they have one of the best super keepers in the world? He still hasn't fixed the space between the midfield and defense, which we had last year. This guy should be sacked. That space between defense and midfield is like Christmas. So obviously there is some sort of issue or issues that are wrong with Ten Hag's tactics, but I think he can't be the one to take all of the blame. There has been time and instances where players aren't doing Ten Hag any favors. Take this moment against Brighton where João Pedro had as much time as he wants to whip in a 
across. This is one moment, but in general, the players just aren't reactive enough to recognize any danger, which leads them to conceding preventable goals. A lot of people like to think that Ten Hag has just lost the dressing room at this point. As a summary, the issues that have plagued Man United for the past seasons under Ten Hag are very much still present. The fact of the matter is that the Premier League has learned this and adapted to play against it and ultimately have identified their issues, which they can exploit. Before I continue, if you could please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, it would really help me out. We're trying to hit 3k subs and we'd love for you to join the community. Thank you. And that brings us back to the main question. Should Eric Ten Hag be sacked or not? Well, as of this recording, he's going to be staying over this international break. However, that does not distract from the fact that the Man United board had to have a meeting and really consider what their options were. That is it, people. Ten Hag is officially Manchester United's new manager. Finishing eighth from the league has been rewarded with a new contract. I understand it. I said two weeks ago that if they don't sack Ten Hag and they give him the third year that we all want, then I will give them time to turn this club around. Some news sources say they're already lining up a replacement in case the team performances get worse, and I don't blame them. Their next five fixtures in the Premier League are Brentford, Chelsea, West Ham, Leicester, and Ipswich. Three of those teams are above them in the league, and all of those teams have scored more goals than them. There is a fair possibility that Man United has trouble scraping three points from these teams, and that would lead to the second of Eric Ten Hag indefinitely. And so if that happens, who is going to be the best replacement for Eric Ten Hag? Give Ruud van Nistelrooy the interim job. See how he gets on. Sack the season off at this stage. The first idea that has come to mind would be Ruud van Nistelrooy. The former United striker was placed as an assistant coach role, some believe for this very reason to take over as the head coach. He was impressive at PSV during his 10 month spell and is overshooting the growth of some impressive talent like Javi Simmons and Cody Gakpo, so he could be a good placeholder, while the club looks for someone to fit a long term role. And that someone could be Thomas Tuchel. The club was already speaking with him over the summer. The former Chelsea manager has a good reputation in English football, but his recent time at Bayern Munich would say otherwise. In the broad picture though, I still think he could be very good for the Red Devils. But a coach with an even worse reputation, and probably would go down with one of the worst coaches of the fans, would be that of Gareth Southgate. The ex-England manager coach stepped down from his job after 8 years, and you probably know that under him, England were not the best they could be. But at Euro 24, they did do okay. Multiple reports have said that United would consider bringing him in, but I suspect that could only happen as a last resort. His reputation of being one of the most pragmatic and boring coaches in the world is very true, but he is the type of manager to bring structure and discipline to a football team, which Man United could really use right now. So, I'll let you be the judge. Should Eric Ten Hag be sacked or not, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video.